Okay, good morning, quantum enthusiasts. Uh, today is lecture three, and we're going to talk about like the real quantum code instructions, the one that actually the ones that actually manipulate the states of qubits. And uh, depending on how far we get today, I think like by the end of it, like you will know everything there is to know about like understanding how quantum code works, at least in principle. We're going to have like some you know tricks and uh, you know concepts that we learn along the way. But I think you'll be able to like go back and like in principle understand how that mystery toggles worked and like you know understand everything. So it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, okay, <clears throat> so last time uh, you know I mentioned that there's like uh, you know your main quantum instructions and there's two kind of like edge case instructions. These ones like new qubit that like makes a new qubit and uh, the extract all instruction which kind of converts qubits to bits uh, through measurement. Um, those are like the edge cases, but the main instructions are the ones that manipulate the states of qubits, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to work at like an abstract level. So I should mention that like every instruction that we talk about today, like, you know, if A then toggle B, this is like an instruction for a physical action that you can do to real like particles that represent actual qubits. So like, you know, we'll say at an abstract level, we'll say like if A then, you know, uh, or maybe we'll say like toggle A, but then that corresponds to an actual thing you can do with like, you know, a photon. If you're using photon polarization to represent your qubits, then like, you know, doing toggle on a qubit might correspond to like having it pass through like a slab of quartz of a certain width. Like that will like implement, um, you know, the toggle instruction if you get things just right. But we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to talk about uh, you know the abstract high-level operations that you can do. Now, uh, among the qubit manipulation instructions, you can arguably also divide them into two categories. And that's what we'll do uh, today. And I might call these two categories the classical reversible instructions and the superposition creating instructions. So uh, let's get into what we mean by this. So I'm going to start with uh, these ones, the classical reversible instructions. And I'll just write on the board some of the ones in this category that we've seen uh, thus far. In previous lectures, we talked about like this toggle instruction, which operates on one qubit. And if its name is A, we know what that does. And uh, we also saw this one. If A, then toggle B. This is an operation that you do on two qubits. And we also saw this one, if A and B, then toggle C. This is an operation that you can do on uh, three qubits. Um, and as I you know, said in the first lecture, these are actually just my uh, personal pseudocode uh, uh, names for these instructions. Um, each of these has like more like official like assembly language style name uh, in, in quantum computing. This one is called um, uh, not A, and this one's called like C not A, B, and this one's called C, C not A, B, C. So a little bit more inscrutable. Maybe the first one makes some sense. I'll explain these names a little bit uh, later. Um, this one's even more confusingly sometimes called X on A. That one's really confusing. Um, yeah, so these are the um, three sort of most basic uh, instructions, quantum instructions in this classical reversible category. Um, and uh, one actually other small comment that I want to make right now is that, you know, since this uh, instruction, for example, like, you know, operates on three qubits, A, B, and C, like when you actually do it physically, you need like three actual qubits to put into your, like, contraption that like executes this instruction. And in particular, that just means they have to be like different qubits. So like unlike maybe in regular programming, you're not allowed to reuse like the same like variable inside one instruction. They always have to be different. So let me write it in in red just to indicate that it's it's not allowed. Um, this is not valid. If A then toggle A. Okay, so this is like a a rule to always remember, like the, all the, the qubits in an operation have to be distinct. OK, so if you've done some of the homework, actually, you've sort of seen that, um, you know, once you have like these instructions, you can like put them together in different ways, maybe like little, little short programs, and thereby build up like composite instructions. 
And uh, here's some more like composite instructions that let me just say are also allowed in in the the, the pseudo code language that we'll use. So here's a couple more. Um, we got uh, if a or b, then toggle c. And how about if uh, not a, then toggle c. Oh, sorry, toggle b, let's say. I mean, it doesn't matter what I call them, but just to be consistent. And like here's another popular one, swap a, b. OK, so uh, let's say in this course, like, um, you know, we'll take it like these six instructions will be like our instruction set for classical reversible instructions. I'll, I'll talk about why I call them classical reversible in a second. Um, you don't really like you don't need all of them. Like maybe as you saw, like if you just have these three, you can like program these ones with like a couple of instructions. And it might be even possible to like squeeze some of these way. Like maybe you don't necessarily need this one. Depends on, yeah, I guess probably you don't actually need this one. You only need these two. But uh, it's not very important exactly which ones you select as your, you know, basic set. Um, so we'll go with these uh, six, even though, like, these are the most common ones. And they have, like, you know, sort of official names. This one is also just called swap, even in these, like, weird assembly language shorthand. But these don't even have, like, typical names. Um, OK. So uh, why do I call these classical reversible instructions? Let's talk a little bit about this uh, terminology. Uh, I guess I'll go with blue. So first of all, why do I put this you know, adjective classical in the title? Um, it's because they have the following, all these uh, operations, these uh, three or six operations have the following uh, property, which I'll call the basic state in, basic state out property. OK, so like if you have you know one qubit, it's like A, its basic states are 0 and 1. And this toggle instruction has the property that if you know A's state is a basic state, then when you do toggle, it's still a basic state. I mean, it switches 0 and 1. OK, and if you have. Uh, two qubits, then there are four basic states for them, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And uh, you know, if you think about it, if, if you just do this instruction, if A, then toggle B, then as we saw before, the new state of the qubits A and B is just like some zeros and ones. So it'll also have some basic state, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. Um, OK, now as we know, you can get qubits into like superposition states. And you might ask like, oh, if I have some qubits that got into a superposition state, like uh, 0.8 amplitude on 0 and 0.6 amplitude on 1, then what happens if you do toggle to that qubit? Well, we'll come to it. But uh, just for now, we'll remember that these properties, uh, these instructions have this, this property. So one thing that means is like these instructions uh, are all instructions that would make sense if the variables were bits. Okay. I mean, these instructions all make sense if A and B and C are just of data type bits. Um, so that's another reason like why you, know, you can call them classical. Now, that said, still somehow talking to me here. OK. Anyway, uh, that said, um, not every you know, classical instruction that manipulates bits is a valid uh, qubit uh, manipulation instruction. OK, like I didn't give you like every possible instruction that you could imagine that operates on bits. I said like, oh, these are the only ones, let's say, that are allowed for now. And for example, here's a you know, perfectly normal looking instruction that you could do on bits, which is like not a valid quantum instruction. Oh, maybe I'll write it over here. Um, a colon equals 1. That's a pretty normal looking instruction for bits. You just like set this variable A to 1. This is not allowed. It's not allowed. It's not a valid quantum instruction. Um, OK, so you might fairly ask, so like, well, which, I mean, which, you know, operations on bits are allowed as quantum instructions? I mean, you can just, 
take my word for it if you want to be kind of unquestioning, like that, like these are the allowed ones and just deal with it. But what is what's going on? What's what's sort of the rule? Um so uh it's to do with the law of physics. There's basically a law of physics that says the following: all qubit manipulation instructions uh, are reversible. And I'll say what I mean by that in a moment, but that also explains uh, the second word in the, the name. They're all reversible. So uh, we'll talk about this actually more in a later lecture, but it's sort of a property of the laws of physics that like every thing that can happen in nature, like the time reversal of it can also is like uh, can happen in nature. And because of this, you know, the only thing that can happen to uh, qubits is things that can be reversed. Um, and, uh, you know, another way to put it is that um, for every valid, you know, if a qubit manipulation instruction is to be valid, it has to have like an undo instruction, an instruction that like does the, that like undoes it or sort of does the opposite. So it has to be, it has to have an undo instruction. Okay, so let me try to clarify what I mean by this. You know, given an instruction, like let's say toggle A, by an undo instruction for it, I mean like an, an instruction that you can do such that like if you were to do that right after toggle A, it would be like exactly undo it. It would be as though you had done nothing. Okay, so uh, maybe you can tell me what instruction can you do that will exactly like cancel out doing toggle A? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so like maybe I'll write it in, in red. You know, the, uh, I'll write over here. So the undo of toggle A is to just toggle A again. Okay, if you toggle something twice, uh, it's a Mitch Hedberg joke, I remixed a remix and it was back to normal. Uh, if you like toggle A twice, then you get back to itself. Uh, and what about this one? Uh, if A, then toggle B. Like, what's an instruction you can do? Like, if you just did this instruction, what's like another instruction you can do that will exactly undo that? Yep. If A, then toggle B. Yeah, it's kind of funny, actually. Uh, if A, then toggle B is like the way to undo this one. Oh, wait, somebody stole the eraser, so we have not the best erasing abilities. If any of you happens to have like a whiteboard eraser, let me know. Uh, oops, if A, then toggle. This one like actually also exactly undoes this one. It's sort of funny, but like, you know, neither of these instructions, like, well, this instruction doesn't change A's value. So A's value never like changes here. And then like B might get toggled if A is true. So if, if uh, B does get toggled because A is true, then this will like toggle it right back. And if uh, A was false, so B didn't get toggled, this will also like not do anything. Okay. Um, actually, I mean, uh, for similar reasons, you can, you can actually check for yourself that like all uh, six of these instructions have the property that they're their own undo. For any of these instructions, if you do them twice in a row, it's equivalent to doing nothing. Now, um, I'm here to tell you that that's actually kind of a coincidence. It's kind of a coincidence that that's true and you shouldn't assume that that's always true. It's just like somehow these are like some of the simplest instructions. They happen to be their own undo, but it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, for example, I'll, I'll give you another example of uh, a valid qubit manipulation operation. Um, it's not one of these basic instructions, but it's one you can build up easily from these basic instructions. And again, if you did the homework, maybe you did it. Um, so consider this operation, which I'll call, uh, you know, left cyclic shift. A, B, C. So this is a hypothetical operation that takes in three qubits. And, uh, you know, if they're in a basic state, oh, thank you. Oh, what a champion. Thank you so much. Should give you like a extra ticket. Um, you know, if they're in some basic states of zeros and ones, then they will be after you do this instruction. And how does it work? 
Uh, I guess just like the new value of A is whatever B was, the new value of B is whatever C was, and the new value of C is whatever A was. So it's like a left shift, except you also like wrap around. So uh, this is like a classical instruction. Like it, you know, if you give it zeros and ones, it gives you back zeros and ones. And it is reversible. It has an undo, but its undo is not this instruction. But probably you can guess what its undo is. It's like the uh, instruction, yeah, you're, yeah, the instruction that you would call like right cyclic shift that like shifts to the right, except it also wrap, wraps around. Okay, and unlike the, like the usual like left shift and right shift in like you know uh, assembly language programming, like you need this like wrap around property in order to make it um, undoable. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, in, in in general, not every instruction is its own undo, but like these ones happen to have this property. So uh, let me say a couple of things. It's possible to implement this left cyclic shift operation on three qubits without like creating or touching any other qubits, like using only you know, other instructions that are on the board that operate on A, B, and C. And that's what I had in mind when I was, I was talking about that. Now, as we'll see later, if you want to implement like more complicated classical operations, you may sort of want to like, do this trick of like, oh, I'm going to allocate a few more qubits and like do some operations that jointly involve, you know, the qubits I'm given plus those new things. And maybe or maybe not, I'll try to clean up or free those qubits I created later. Uh, we're going to talk about all of that in upcoming lectures. Um, but uh, in some sense, um, the sort of special case operations of like, for example, creating new qubits, they don't arguably have this uh, reversible property. So they're a little bit outside the scope of this discussion. We're going to only talk about instructions that manipulate qubits that like you already have. Um, yeah, just for a non-example, remember before I told you like we have a colon equals one, this is like an invalid instruction. And that's because it's not uh, reversible. There's no instruction like, you know, classical type instruction that you can always execute after this, and it'll just restore the state. So you have to somehow remember what value A used to have. Um, OK, so you can take this like reversibility or like undo existence property as like some property that uh, all these valid classical type qubit manipulation instructions have. Um, or I can just also tell you like it's a, a law of it, it follows from a law of physics that like um, the set of classical type or basic state in, basic state out instructions that um, you can actually physically do to qubits is exactly all those ones that are reversible, that have an undo. <laughs>